Uh, hi, dear students, dear civil service aspirants. Welcome to Gal and IAS. I'm Justin. And today, uh, I will share you some important topics from history for your upcoming prelims examination. So let me tell you one thing. I'm not saying that only these topics are important or only these topics you have to cover from history. I'm not saying like that. I know that you have already covered the history syllabus. You have already prepared the history as per the exam syllabus. You have done the revision also. These are some topics which I say that you have to give priority in your history revision for this exam. Okay. You have already done with the entire syllabus of the history. You have already prepared them. And these are some areas where you have to focus more. Because a high probability of appearing those areas in your examination based on an analysis of the last 20 to 30 years questions. Okay. But I am telling you, I am not meaning that uh, only these topics you have to cover. I said you have already covered your history syllabus. You have already prepared your history, ancient, medieval, modern and culture. And these are some core areas you have to revise well. Okay. That is it. Along with the other areas. This also you have to do, these areas you just give more importance. That is it. If you not covered, you revise them very well. Okay. So here, uh, ancient India. When we start with the ancient India, yeah, for your GS history preparation, you start with Indus Valley Civilization. So we have no, we know that recently many archaeological excavations were done. Many archaeological uh, findings were done at various sites of Indus Valley Civilization. So here, Indus Valley site, Indus Valley sites are important for you. Such a question previously asked by UPC, I mean which one of the following is an Indus site or is not an Indus site. Such factual questions also asked by UPC. Sometimes analytical questions asked from Indus Valley civilization. So cover the popular sites on the bank of which river they are situated or located. The region, they belong to which district or which state. Which, uh, which district of which state or which particular uh, historical area. Okay. So, please try to identify the popular sites of the civilization, uh, river banks and their location in various uh, states and the popular findings from each site. What all the findings? For example, uh, terracotta figurine of mother goddess or maybe fire altar or this uh, uh, like a priest king statue or this uh, like, a, like a rose of granaries. Okay, so please try to understand the archaeological findings from various sites because UPC will interchange, shuffle them and will confuse you. Then you should know the, the fundamental, the salient features, basic features of this urban culture of Indus Valley civilization. It's social, economic, political, cultural, religious features. Now, Vedic literature from second module, you should have a clear cut idea about the classification of Vedic literature what they are dealing with okay what this literature dealing with what was the status of the women in Rig Vedic times and later Vedic time then you should have a uh, have an analytical comparison between Rig Vedic and later Vedic times Rig Vedic and later Vedic okay a comparison analytical comparison between Rig Vedic society later Vedic society Rig Vedic religion polity economy uh, with that of later Vedic economy religion polity and status of women etc so that comparison you should know also you should have a comparison between yes this uh, Rig Vedic age and Indus Valley civilization or Vedic civilization and Indus civilization you must go for that comparison now next module you study about Mahat Janpadas yes you should have an idea what is that classification of monarchy states and republican states what are monarchy states what are republican states you should know their geographical location Okay, the Mahajanpada, 16 Mahajanpadas are there, practice with the map. Okay, what are the South Indian Mahajanpadas, North Indian Mahajanpadas or Northernmost Mahajanpada or Westernmost Mahajanpada, Easternmost Mahajanpada. You should know their arrangement, North to East, okay, North to East, North to uh, West or North to South. You should know, yes, that uh, the, the location of these Mahajanpadas and their capitals are important for you. Then, of course, the ruling dynasties. The rulers of these Mahajanpadas and their cultural contributions. These things are important for you. Buddhism, Jainism, obviously, I used to say it's a blockbuster module. 
minimum one question is guaranteed. Buddhism, Jainism, this time you focus on Buddhism, Jainism, classification of literature, different Buddhist to Jain literature is important for you. Teachings of Buddha and uh, Mahavira, their comparison is important for you. Uh, most importantly, Buddhism, Jainism, literature, literary works of Buddhism, Jainism, literature related to Buddhism, Jainism, that is important for you. I am not saying that you should not study other parts, you should study other parts, you have already done that. These are some areas where you have to, uh, yeah, pay attention for this time. Now, Maurya, when you come to Maurya, obviously, Mauryan sources are important for you. There are uh, like, uh, what is called, uh, inscriptions are there, or epigraphical sources are there, inscriptions are there, foreigners accounts are there, literary sources are there, religious literary sources are there. Okay, different, different sources are there, which give us information about this Mauryan, Mauryan age. So, you should have an idea about uh, different classification of the sources. What are the different sources and what kind of the information they are conveying that you should know regarding Mauryan age. Then Mauryan administration is important for you. Various terms or terminology related to Mauryan administration is important for you. Now, next is post-Maurya age. The chronology is important. You know the post-Maurian rulers are there. Okay, Indo-Greeks are there, Shagas are there, Parthians are there, or Kushanas are there, uh, Shangas, Kanduvar, Shadavahanas are there. So here chronology of these uh, post-Maurian ruling dynasties is important for you or post-Maurian rulers are important for you. Various inscriptions and literary works done during this time is important for you and these uh, developments in the art, developments of art that is important for you. These are some uh, priority areas in this module. Moving on to the next uh, Sangam age, Sangam literature. Recently you know that it was in the news, Kiradi excavations and uh, so many uh, recent uh, Sangam sites excavations and findings were done. So Sangam literature is important. Sangam literature, you should know their classification, what they are dealing with, then uh, how they deal with the society, economy, polity, religion and women of this uh, South India. What they talk about the society, economy, polity, religion and women of this South India. Okay, these informations must be very clear to you and Sangam terminology is also important for you. Now moving on to Gupta, Gupta inscriptions, various inscriptions are there. And uh, Gupta terminology related to taxation system, terminology related to that uh, polity, terminology related to judicial administration, terminology related to central administration and uh, provincial administration. Those things are important for you. Don't miss. Now, post Gupta dynasties. You should know the chronology of the post Gupta dynasties. Who are the dynasties? What were the rulers? Or where were they ruling? Then the foreigners' views. Foreigners' views of that particular time. Okay, different foreigners visited. What are their views on society, religion, culture and economy of that particular time? These things are important for you from ancient India. Medieval India, let me tell you, Rajaputs. Okay, you start with the Trupa tribe struggle, Rashtragudas, Palas, Pradiharas, then Rajaputs. Focus on their cultural contributions. Focus on their, focus on their cultural contributions, their architecture, etc. Art, architectural contributions. Then there is uh, like uh, Chalukyas, Pallavas, Cholas, Hoishalas, Kagatyas. Kagatya mission, you remember? So see, Chalukyas, Pallavas, Cholas, Hoishalas, Kagatyas, you focus on who were the popular rulers of these dynasties, where they ruled and what were their cultural contributions. What were their cultural contributions? Okay. Then Albaruni's accounts about this uh, medieval India. What Albaruni talk about this medieval India? Then various Delhi Sultans are there, the reforms, especially especially Balban, okay, Iltutumish, Razia, Munna bin Tukluk, these rulers are important for you, sultans are important for you, the sultans reforms, there are uh, like uh, revenue reforms are there, educational reforms are there, administrative reforms are there, focus on that and the terminology related to Delhi Sultanate is important for you. Now Vijayanagar Empire, different sources, sources related to Vijayanagar Empire history, Vijayanagar history, different sources, archaeological sources are there, literary sources are there, Please find out what are the different sources, what they are dealing about. Different foreign travelers are there. You should know what are the different travelers or foreign travelers visited Vijayanagar Empire and during whose tenure they visited Vijayanagar Empire, what are their views on Vijayanagar Empire that you have to cover. Then uh, central and state administration, central administration terms and provincial administration terms are important, their features are important, foreigners accounts are important. Similar way, Bahmani Sultanate, you should know their cultural contributions. Now Sufi, Sufi Bhakti movements are there. Sufi terminology like Fana, Ziyarat, 
so sufi terminologies are important sufi silsilas you should know the names of different silsilas and to the name of different sufi saints okay and sufi terminology important bhakti acharyas are there different bhakti saints are there their literary works bhakti saints and their literary works or literary works related to bhakti movement that is important for you uh, then this uh, guru nanak and kabir guru nanak kabir comparison is important for you due to current affair relevance now mughal empire so bhakti acharyas when you study you should go for their philosophies different philosophies also then mughal when you study focus on humayun shah jahan two important rulers you know i'm not saying that you should not you should ignore others i'm not saying that prepare them but give importance for humayun shah jahan their major events during their time and their contributions okay then mughal terminology is also important for you mughal terminology related to revenue administration uh, agricultural reforms or related to judicial administration related to their economic administration terminology is important uh, then you should know mughal's contributions to uh, cultural developments then different historians of the time and various works which got translated from sanskrit to persian works which got translated from sanskrit to persian Shivaji's administration, Shivaji the Great, his administration, features of his administration, various treaties he signed. Then there is uh, advent of Europeans, there you focus Portuguese, the various reforms of Portuguese, major events during the time of Portuguese and Dutch. Okay, Bedara battle you remember, okay, Kartse system of Portuguese. So just uh, focus on major events, major reforms of them. So these are things you have to cover from medieval India, both ancient medieval India, more weightage must be given on the cultural contributions of this ancient and medieval India, also terminology and chronology, that things are important for you. Moving on to modern India. Moving on to modern India, modern India, you know that uh, majority questions would be asked from modern India, but it has a good strategy of uh, preparing modern India. I mean, one must have a good strategy of preparing modern India, otherwise you will be in trap. So anyway, that we have, we have already done so many videos related to preparation of history or maybe important topics from ancient medieval modern different different videos we have done for which you can just uh, uh, check in our channel galandaya's youtube channel uh, different playlists are there now this is modern india you start with uh, the chronology of these later mughal rulers you should know that chronology of these later mughal rulers and the popular events happened at that time for example imposition of uh, Jasiya, abolition of Jasiya, or uh, introduction of Ijara system, or maybe uh, Third Panipat battle, or maybe Colonel battle, or Nadir Shah's invasion, or Plashi, Baksar battles, okay. So there are different developments that happen, or maybe formation of autonomous state of Bengal, Hyderabad, or Awadh. So different events happened in the uh, later Mughal rulers' time. You should know later Mughal rulers, their chronology and chronology of the events during their time or you should know what are the events happened uh, during the tenure of each ruler. That part is important for you. Now, British East India Company, the trade dominion. What all the events related to trade dominion of this British East India Company? How this British eventually established their monopoly over trade? What are the events related to that uh, establishing their trade monopoly? That part is important for you. British conquests are important. Different British conquests are there. Their causes and consequences are important for you. Causes and consequences and their chronology is important for you. Especially Anglo-Maratha, Anglo-Afghan wars are important for you. Anglo-Maratha, Anglo-Afghan wars are important for you this year. Then British administration, British administrative reforms, their constitutional reforms are there, educational reforms are there, administrative reforms are there, judicial reforms are there, legislative reforms are there. So focus on their administrative reforms. Uh, especially regulating act 1773 1858 act 1935 act etc important for you then Cornwallis reforms of Cornwallis especially Cornwallis code Cornwallis reforms William Bendig reforms Ripon's reforms okay these reforms are again very very important for you okay the reforms during the time of these various uh, these various uh, viceroys governor generals that is important for you British East India Company and uh, British economic policy and their impact, their impact on artisans, artisans, Indian zamindars, women, Indian peasants, okay, British economic policies, their impact on Indian farmers, women, artisans, manufacturers, Indian zamindars, their land tenure system, their permanent Mahalwari, Riyotwari settlements are there, so their land tenure system and their impact, these things are important for you, then peasants, tribal uprisings are there, peasants and uh, tribal uprisings are there, 
their location is important, their leaders are important, reasons are important. What were the reasons of such uprisings? Uh, then their outcomes are important. Again, this Ahom revolt is important. Ahom revolt is important. 1857 mutiny. What were the different historians' views on the character or nature of this 1857 mutiny? Leaders and centers of 1857 mutiny. Impact of this 1857 mutiny. Now, the socio-religious reform movements are the uh, different socio-religious reform movements you have already studied of Rajara Mohan Roy, Swami Dayanand Saraswati, or a lot, lot of socio-religious reform movements are there. Adi Samaj, Brahma Samaj, Prathana Samaj, Theosophical Society, Aligarh Movement, so many movements are there. And there you have to cover all, especially the contributions of Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar, M.G. Ranade, Srinarayan Guru, uh, Henry Vivian De Rocio. Okay, those you focus. Then different social religious reformist organizations are there. Have an idea about that. Generals and purpose during these uh, 18, 19 centuries, especially 18, uh, this 19th and 20th century. Generals and papers, generals and papers, generals and papers, their founders, editors, that is important. And social religious reform movements, there you also focus on Namdari and Kuga movements are again very, very important for you. And I'm not saying that you should study this only. I'm saying you already covered already revised and these areas give special attention okay if not covered you cover this then chronology of wars reforms and events chronology of wars reforms and events before this 1885 before the foundation of Indian National Congress then freedom struggle history you should know the chronology of the events related to freedom struggle history you must know the timeline of this freedom struggle that is important we have already done in our class in our offline class and please check our sessions, different sessions are there which follows the timeline, chronology. Uh, it's already different sessions I have done in the video, you can check it. Freedom struggle chronology of events important for you. Revolutionary organizations, revolutionary leaders, their association with major events that is for example Kakori train robbery, Chittagong Armory raid, okay. So there are different, 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 different conspiracy cases, different, different uh, revolutionary events are there. So you should know what are the different revolutionary leaders and their association with the different events. Then extremists, you should know what were these, uh, like, uh, I mean, Congress extremists, what were their ideas or ideologies, how they're different from moderates, and what are the major events that happened during the extremist phase of Indian freedom struggle. And Gandhiji, Gandhiji, here you focus, Gandhiji's localized movements, his South African experience plus his localized movements in India, his initial, like Chambaran Ahmedabad, uh, Khera, Satyagraha, Sadar, you should also focus on what are the major related events happened during this uh, uh, like uh, uh, like uh, Chambaran, Ahmedabad uh, and uh, Khera Satyagrahas. His local programs, there are uh, causes and the consequences, South African experience, then his participation in various events of 1920s, 30s and 40s. His participation in various events, okay. Gandhiji participated in first, second or third round table conference. Gandhiji participated in only second round table conference. So his Harijan Sevak Sangh, his views on Swarajisti Party, NCM, CDM, Kit India. So Gandhiji's participation of various events. What are the events in which Gandhiji participated? That you should focus. Rain mutiny is important for you. Constituent assembly and uh, the related events is important for you. Then the personalities from modern India were in the news for the last two years or maybe last at least last one year. Okay. So personalities and events, I mean centenary celebrations, anniversary celebrations. So events and personalities of history in the news. That's again important for you. Uh, these are some very, very important topics I would say you have to revise well. You should not skip. Okay, I'm not saying this is the only thing you have to study. I'm saying along with others, these areas should not be skipped. These areas must be given. Uh, yeah, like at most priority, you pay attention to these areas also along with the other areas. So these areas should not miss in your preparation. Revise very well. And uh, rest of the areas, I hope that you have already done. Okay. And any doubts, uh, if you feel, if you have any doubts, you feel free to contact us. I'm always happy to support you in your preparation. Uh, and uh, feel confident, stay, stay confident, stay happy. Don't be down, don't be depressed. And don't worry about your current uh, ongoing mock test series, okay? So just focus on minimizing your negative marking and uh, increasing your score, increasing your score. You are something around uh, 60 to 80. Yeah, you score, you are scoring some, most of the aspirants scoring something around 70, 80. So it is a matter of just 10 or 15 questions here, okay. So don't worry, you are very near to that results or success. Focus on, stay consistent in your preparation, in your revision. 
uh, stay focused and try to solve maximum number of UPC standard potential questions. Okay. Similar way, you will get to topics. Culture I already done. Culture I have already done for you. So similar way, you will get important topics from other subjects also. So stay tuned. If you find this helpful, please do subscribe our channel, share with your friends. Please leave your valuable feedback in the comment box. That's it. Thank you. All the best.